Welcome back, everybody. Drew Barrymore is the guest tonight, right? Mm -hmm. She's a national treasure. I love her. She's got a talk show. It's about damn time. About damn time, entertainment industry. Sorry, I was angry. The Trump presidency has been four years of him making shocking and hate-filled remarks. I've often wondered, is there any message, anything he could do, anything he could say, anything he could put out that would cause him to lose his most loyal supporters? Well, to answer that, I turned to someone else with a long history of making shocking remarks. Triumph, the insult comic dog. Over the last couple of years, Triumph has given The Late Show a series of hard-hitting journalistic reports, most recently back in February during simpler, happier times, impeachment. And like me, Triumph was curious about Trump's supporters, so he gathered some of them together. Jim? Despite the travesties of his coronavirus response, the failed economy, and California's exploding trees, President Trump's loyal followers have stuck with him through the good times and the end times. One wonders if anything the president says or does could cost him their herd mentality. So we brought these actual Trump supporters to this actual focus group research center, where this actual moderator showed them a series of actual fake Trump campaign ads. Thank you for, for coming in today. Appreciate you guys coming in. Just to sort of get, you know, grounded and, and hit, for me to have some background, I'd like you to just tell me a little bit about, like, you know, why is President Trump, you know, your guy? I like money. Money. And he knows how to make it. Uh -huh. yeah. And um, he is not a politician. And it's good to have somebody that, that speaks some of the things that I want to just scream sometimes. As you can probably imagine, you know, the president isn't too happy about the polls right now and isn't too happy about the way that he's being perceived in the media. And so, you know, he really wants to kind of take back the narrative. He's trying to figure out what's going to make a difference in November. So I'm going to show you the ads. We're going to talk about like, what you like about them, if there's anything you dislike, the message, and then we'll have some other questions and things like that. Okay, here we go. We've all seen how out of control the radical Biden-Harris liberals are getting. In Portland, they now want to defund firefighters and ambulance corps. It's disgusting. They're passing legislation to rename every street Black Lives Matter Plaza. It's going to be incredibly confusing. Portland is already printing their own money, but with no whites on it. The schools have gotten rid of the plus sign because it looks too much like the cross. And of course, they're tearing down our precious statues. We need to stop these people. And I've got a plan. Let's electrify the statues. When the protest starts, we put 100,000 volts through them. The second they touch it, boom, whoosh. And just let them try to pee on it. We may lose some dogs and birds in the process, but it'll be worth it to save our history. Tell me your reaction to that one. So what's, what do you think about, about that? I think that he could have explained it a little bit better than that. Um, like he just said, you know, history is history. That's in the past. We can't, why are we going to go around and change all these name brand foods? I'm all for putting electricity on every monument. We don't teach history no more. We okay. learn from history. Okay, disturbing, but not deplorable. Awesome feedback. So that was great. So we're going to look at a, another one now. Everybody knows we're not equipped to have a fair election in November between the Kung Flu Panda virus and the mail fraud. But Congress says we have to have it. So to ensure an honest result, I'm proposing my new best of three election plan. The first election happens as scheduled in November. Then the next one in 2022 when we're fully prepared. And if a tiebreaker is needed, one more in 2024. Look, Americans love playoffs. They're way more exciting and, more importantly, more fair. Think about the ratings. Everybody wins. All right. That was new to me. I haven't heard that proposal, but uh, I think that might be uh, very beneficial, yeah. I think we go to the polls every two years anyway and just get more people out to the polls. Uh -huh. Not that long ago, the president said something about, well, maybe we should think about delaying the election. So how long should that be? Like, what would be reasonable for you? Six months. Shoot, we had eight years of Obama. I think we could do six more months of Trump. Could he do an executive order, though? I mean, is that possible? He could executive order anything. He's president of the United States. This is the first time I've wondered if masks really do cut off oxygen to the brain. Let me show you another one here. This is great, uh, great discussion, by the way. So thank you guys for 
All your good thoughts. I'm blown away by how children are immune to the Hong Kong flu virus, and it gave me a great idea. Since children can't get sick, why not send them into the workforce? Forget the liberal schools, which are a disaster, frankly. Let's put them to work and get the economy going again. Think about it. Keep the adults home, but let the kids be our essential workers, our supermarket clerks. They'll get it done. They're immune. They're in no danger of working in a meatpacking plant. No danger operating heavy machinery. They'll learn something valuable: how to pack meat. Think about it. Kid firemen—they love that job. Even make them cops because children aren't racist. They don't even know about it. We put kids to work. We can finally jump ahead of China in this area too. They're going to be super jealous. But nothing they can do. Little kid doctors, little kid stockbrokers. It'll be safe and adorable. I don't think you're putting a six-year-old in a meat yeah. pack of plant. I think like if it wasn't five-year-olds and it was like twelve-year-olds. Yeah, all of those I think would have to be teenagers. I mean, policemen, uh, fire department. That's physical jobs. Kids don't know racism. Are there certain groups that it makes more sense for? The Mexicans. Uh, farmers. Communities that you know are in poverty. They're the ones that. Sell drugs. I don't do drugs. I mean, it's like they're not trying to better themselves. Um, I mean, it's just really disgusting that there are a lot of people that are just lazy. Fun fact: This is the same focus group that approved the Game of Thrones finale. I'm going to share with you an audio file that has been uncovered, and basically the concern is that there's some dirt that's going to come out. You know, that the media is going to be could be releasing this. So let me play this for you. I don't know. I mean, uh, I heard that microwaving kills the virus. I don't believe that's been proven. Now we're going to wait around for proof? I mean, we don't have that kind of time. I mean, have we tried putting a person in the microwave? That's not possible. I don't mean, look, I mean, build a giant human-sized microwave. Why wouldn't you try it? I mean, what's the harm? We can't just put a human being in... Not human beings. I mean, we have all these immigrants in the camp. I mean, all these convicted convicts. You could offer them, I don't know, offer them a parole or just unlock the door and give them a head start. Are you joking, sir? No, I'm not joking. I mean, I'm not being sarcastic. How dangerous can 20 seconds be? I can't even melt ice cream in 20 seconds. Oh, my God. What do you think they should do? I mean, can he just say he did it and he was just joking? He, just, they were, yeah, they only, they only part, they only put part of the conversation in. They just took out what they wanted. No, but that's just like how he said, you know, um, drink bleach or something to, you know, kill the virus. He just, whatever on his mind, he's going to speak. Uh huh. That's that's Trump. He's not a puppet like Biden. Maybe there's a sliver of like, well, maybe microwaving would do something to help. Is that that is that how like? Good ideas get made, you know, happen mm -hmm. is by people having crazy thoughts of, yeah. and you then know, they bring, them back down. bring it. Uh huh. If you admit to that, that you would possibly think about using an a, a, a immigrant in a microwave, like that crossed your mind. It's just taking out a normal person, it's done nothing wrong, and microwaving them. Nobody's going to go for that. Nobody. I mean, even I, I still vote for him, but. That was stupid. So let's say that there was some really good news coming out about like a vaccine and Trump was able to take credit for that. This one is about some potential good news about some vaccine research and so let's take a look. I've told you how I feel about these loser scientist people. They're way too slow, like Sleepy Joe. So guess what? While they've been crying and waiting, I've developed a vaccine. I put up my own money. I have a knack for this. My uncle was at MIT. Doctors say we got to test it more, but it'll be ready to roll out right after the election. That's just around the corner. But I think it's going to be terrific and tasty. The most delicious vaccine in history. Side effects may include abdominal pain, slight headaches, heartburn, and diarrhea like you wouldn't believe. You've never seen diarrhea like this. You'll so much you'll get tired of Hey, some people are really happy with these side effects. I mean, a lot of models pay to have that kind of diarrhea. It's a great way to lose weight. You won't like it, but by the end, you'll miss it. Plus dizziness. May not work. Did I tell you I was going to fix this thing? 
My new vaccine, ready November 4th in Florida, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Arizona, and possibly Texas if those numbers don't go up. That's winning. Is this the kind of news that can help get Trump across the finish line to get him elected again? Oh, yeah. At the end there, he showed that list of states, right? Is it okay to, to give it to certain states first? I think you hold it from Cuomo. Yeah, in New York. Yeah, you don't give New York nothing. That guy's a flipping idiot. What states should be the ones to, uh, to get it the first? The highest numbers, I guess, you know? It's like... well, no, that's California, New York. You can't uh, do that. The highest right. numbers, New Jersey, New York, California. All the New York, should... Texas, Texas. If we we're going to show one of these two people or, or say, here's who's going to, who we think should get the vaccine, who do you want to see get it? Oprah Winfrey or do you know who these people were? Yeah, we'll go with the gun count ones. These are the people who defended yeah. their property. Oh, yeah. Remember when the mob was out in, the running property. through their neighborhood? Yeah, property yeah. owners get it. These guys? Yeah. Tell me about why we want to pick them. Because she's voting for Biden. <laughs> They're relatable. Yeah. I mean, they're they're sticking up for themselves. They're us. Mm -hmm. There you have it. The people have spoken, occasionally in coherent sentences. Trump, 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 Trump. And in the end, no matter whom you support, we can all agree America is blessed with an informed electorate, and the future is brighter than ever. For me to poop on. Thank you, Triumph. We'll be right back with Drew Barrymore.